go right from there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, I'm going to try to make this quick video. Was, oh, I was totally disturbed. And um, it goes to show you, just it just proves my point. Well, anyway, whatever side of the diaspora that you're on, first of all, let me welcome you. I appreciate you being out there, family. But, you know, I just want to talk about uh, universal narcissism a little bit. And I've always contended that there is a universal narcissism that permeates, especially these United States, the people that even founded the country, um, they might have had good intentions, but it was hijacked into something totally, totally insane. Because when you look at it, we breed narcissists over here. And the reason we breed them is because it is who we are. Okay, if you come to birth as a white person, you are given a, a total false reality of what history is, what the world is, um, and how it really operates. So you are operating from a sense of, uh, or from a set of rules and principles that have been, was given to you by a narcissist that allowed you to think everything was okay. You can do whatever you want to do. The world operates this way, all while dumping on the scapegoat and the lower person that we have deemed to be the black person. You know, as well as I do, you've been taught in your homes that you were privileged. I mean, I, like I told y'all before, I've heard work with women who said, I told my daughter that she was privileged. So you are very well aware of it. I think even uh, Jane Elliott alluded to it. But you have been complicit. You have not cared that we have been deemed the bottom caste of society after we built it. You didn't care about that. As long as when you walk into wherever you go, your white world is not affected. You can get whatever you need. I mean, I'm not talking about you know, if you just really, I'm so within reason. The world is geared towards white for white people. Although the first person that shed blood for this America was Chris Pisanis. See, this is how your cognitive, this is how your, um, your psychosis and your narcissistic behavior begins to take shape. So then you steal these people, you have them build a country. You know, you and then you at the same time you're talking about how you're all Americans and we are Americans, we love freedom and equality, but you own the neck of black man, of the black man. You own the neck of the black woman and you're selling her baby. Her babies, their babies, you're selling them. What kind of crazy shit is that? The world has started to wake up to the atrocities of of, of people like King Leopold, who did what he did in the Congo. Not even, I mean, because it, it didn't, it wasn't just in the Americas, okay? So the the history of the European and and how he wanted to dominate the black man is just insane. So when you begin to look at it, as societies evolve, 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 people are more intelligent. Some people understand that we need a new way of policing because they're not comfortable with the old way of policing. We got yoga now. People are practicing. They wasn't practicing yoga a hundred years ago. They weren't. You didn't have black millionaires the way you have them now, like LeBron James, and a, you didn't have these kind of uh, black people a hundred years ago. Okay, uh, Frederick Douglass was a little was a lot better off than a lot of slaves. Okay, and and, and today it's still the same, but. We, you know, although poverty kills and in the richest nation of, a, of a, uh, in the world, y'all still have to admit that um, poverty in America is different than poverty in other countries. And if you don't know that, then maybe you need to travel because that's not my conversation. Okay. 
no matter what you think, I've seen some other places and I still dare say I would rather be in poverty in America than in poverty someplace else. If that makes any sense. Okay, so let's just keep it real. And that's because my ancestors built it. Okay, and I'm not going to negate that fact. I'm not going to, and, and we built it into a hell of a country. Okay, and so for that, y'all can, can't keep dismissing us for that. So now, back to this narcissistic type of in, um, um, country. You also have a judicial system that is unproportionately putting black people in, in, in jail. Okay, unproportionately. And, and, and you know it, you see it. And how long do you think that can keep going on? But I'll just make up a bunch of statistics and I'll make, no, I'll make up a bunch of stories that say these people deserve to be in jail. And as long as I can cognitive make myself believe that, I can keep living a, a normal life. And as long as I can make a uh, volunteer, I mean, a, a donation during Christmas time and think, uh, oh, the poor, give them coats for kids and things like that during, I don't have, my conscience don't have to worry about if I'm involved with any of this other stuff for what I have. Okay? Because a lot of those corporations were involved in the slave trade. A lot of those corporations were involved with um, selling us. And they never was thinking about, because because they weren't spiritual, they was never thinking about this crazy stuff can't last forever. I don't care how big of a military we uh, build. I don't care how big of a system that we keep going. It's going to be it's going to continue to be chaos and fighting because people don't want to be enslaved. It happened in South Africa with apartheid. That's what it is over here. It's the same thing, apartheid. So my point being, when it, Generations grow and generations grow and they do do more yoga and they get to know one another or they have to hashtag. Um, uh, they may not know all the intricacies to how the world got here, but once they begin to understand history and the dominant elite society is not able to keep the real history away from its inhabitants, then they wake up. If they have any intelligence and they feel repulsed and they feel compelled to change the society in which we live. They know they can't keep living off the backs of black and brown. They know we're going to rebel. They know in 20 years it's going to be a black world. And if you don't want a thought process of somebody doing to you what you did to them, don't you think you should try to change that opt uh, 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 optic while you have the ability? Why you have a chance? We used to sing in, in church, sing a song. Well, I believe I praise the Lord while I have a chance. Oh, I believe I praise the Lord while I have a chance. I believe I thank the Lord while I have a chance because I may not have a chance anymore. I may, this chance may not come back. This chance may, I may not have a chance to make right a wrong. And if I don't, the, the, the universe is on the side of right always, no matter what you think. And as me being a person of a spiritual hue, uh, I already know it's just going in divine order. It's going in divine time, like it should. So, I just want to say, the more my Caucasian sisters and brothers understand that this is a real important time in history. It is, don't fear this. Walk into it. It is a greatness on the other side of this. Because you cannot go on living your life since you want to burst down narcissism. You can't have a judicial system and a system that is um, running off the scapegoats. And y'all have deemed black people the scapegoats of the family. And you've deemed the white children the golden children. 
and you can't keep abusing us and abusing us and saying, oh, no, 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 that's not pee on your leg, it's raining. So what you see now is awakening of the people that saying, I get it. I realized that I was hurt too by the history and the lies that was told to me by the master narcissist. And now that I see who I am and I see how I am in connection with you and I realize that we are all one. I realize this is a human family. This is a human problem. This needs human uh, adjusting. And those of us who can continue to think on that level, in my opinion, no matter how rough it gets, though it doesn't mean you not thinking about your clan, doesn't mean anything like that, okay? And you have to put your politics first. I am saying that. Those who support it good and fine, they understand, they get it. And if that doesn't signal to you that this is something that can't be stopped, um, because once the narcissist is found out, you have to do your due diligence in knocking down his all, all his abuse. And I think that's what's happened. We had knocked down all his abuse, all the symbols of abuse. Uh, from Robert E. Lee, like I said, the King Leopold and all these kind of uh, uh, racist Confederate flags, all these things that y'all subjected black people to. And tell me, it's part of your history. What a narcissistic history to shine that shit in front of my face. But my ancestors had to get beat and have their children sold. And you think that I'm supposed to be proud of this? All I'm doing is seething under my skin, seething at you, sneering, saying, You sick. But I think the day that we had not heard, it's over. It's bigger than George Floyd now. It's a matter of the energy on the planet knows what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to go. With that being said, y'all, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.